Farmhouse decor is my absolute go-to when DIYing and today I have for you four absolutely beautiful decorations perfect for the kitchen. So stay tuned. All right, we are going to start with this uh, piece of one by six that I got at the hardware store. I've done several projects with it. And I'm also gonna take this piece of leftover, it's like a spindle from a table that I DIY'd a while ago. And I'm gonna cut two other pieces to, um, or like this one, but that's going to be the same width as the spindle because we're gonna create a little decorative toolbox for the kitchen, almost like a centerpiece for the dining room table. Once I had the three pieces cut to the same size, I am going to lightly sand, removing any splinters and just making sure that it's nicely smooth. These little decorative, kind of like um, cutting boards, they're from the Dollar General. They were $3 each. I thought they were very farmhouse looking, but I am going to, tr uh, they're going to be the sides of the decorative toolbox. So you saw there that the spindle has a very large dowel at the end, and uh, not large, but larger than the hole that the um, cutting board here had. So I'm just going to use a space blade here just to kind of cut it and make sure that that little dowel that's at the end of each side of the spindle is going to fit right through because that's where it's going to go. So I used, again, the spade blade. I'm not sh quite sure what size it was. I just kind of measured it to the spindle, make sh making sure that it was going to fit. So once I had it cut and sanded down, now is the moment of truth, making sure it fits, and it does perfectly. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. The two decorative cutting boards had like a little, I think it was like a chicken and a little piggy. And I am going to reuse them, but I'm not going to use them on the sides of the decorative toolbox. So I'm just going to remove them very carefully, making sure that I'm not ruining the chicken wire as well, uh, as, well as the chicken and the piggy. So I'm going to put those to the side and now it's time to give everything two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. Now I'm going to start painting the inside of the box. So I'm only going to do one side of everything. That's because I don't know if you've ever painted inside a box, but it's not my favorite thing to do when it's assembled. So I figured I'm just going to give everything two coats when everything's not assembled and it's going to make my life so much easier. So I did that with everything. Once the paint was dry, of course, then it was time to put everything together. But that way, and then we can paint the outside when everything's put together. But I just, I've learned my lesson and I just like doing it better when, when it's disassembled. Now, if it's already a box that was maybe thrifted and it's already assembled, it is what it is. But if I can, if I can do it this way, it's much better. So now it's time to staple everything. I could have used brand nails and, and I, and I did afterwards, I did add a couple extra brad nails here and there but um, using the staples I think just felt better because these little cutting boards are not real wood and so I just wanted to um, I think staples I think the brad nail maybe would have been too thin and gone right through it if it was like pulled on it so so once I had the two sides put on it it was time to place the longer sides and I just it was pretty snug fit but it was actually perfect I just kind of pressed just a little bit pulled on it until it fit perfectly and then with a hammer I just kind of hammered it in just so that it was nicely straight and then um, again stapling it um, and I did use some brad nails like I said to secure the three boards together as well as I just added a few more here and there on the sides. I'm going to place the spindle. I should have done this before and I completely forgot. So now I'm like, I'm, I'm a little nervous at this point. I'm thinking, oh my gosh. So you're going to see here that some of the staples come off when I am hammering it. You're going to see it right about I think it's now see see how it came off and that's okay um, i did you know hammer it down and it, it was fine um and then that's when i added the brand nails as you can see just to make sure everything was secure and tightened but the spindle fit everything fit perfectly so once i secured everything with a little bit more brand nails then it's time to paint the outside of the toolbox while I'm painting this, I do want to take a minute here. If you are enjoying this video and if you really um, enjoy my channel, I would love for you to give me a thumbs up. 
giving me a thumbs up on my videos really help this channel and this video reach more people and it helps me grow so i really really appreciate it if you did that for me I did give everything two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Band in the Linen White. However, I'm not looking for perfection. Um, I, I am going to distress it. I want it to have a very farmhouse look. So I am going to do as much coverage as possible. I did also paint the chicken wire, as you can tell. I usually do that with a dry brush technique. That way it's not like dripping on me. But I just wanted it to have a white finish. So here I'm just using my sanding block to kind of gently sand all over the place just to kind of give it again a little farmhouse look to it. And remember the little chicken and the little piggy that I removed earlier. So we're going to reuse them. We're going to put them to one side of each side of the toolbox. And I'm going to secure them in place with brad nails. Um, one's going to be on one side, one's going to be on the other. Because I didn't want them to have to be on the same side and look a little bit like too cluttered. And that way the toolbox can be, it's going to be decorative for flowers. So it can be placed facing one way or the other. And then I did place some greenery. Um, it's just some regular greenery from Walmart, but it can certainly be used any season. So any fall decor coming up, I think would be great to place in here. And then Christmas, I think it's just usable year round. And I absolutely love, love, love the way this decorative toolbox turned out. For this next DIY, I am going to take this piece of um, other scrap wood that I got um, this time at the hardware store. It was only 25 cents and I get these at Lowe's all the time. A lot of you always ask me, I don't ever find them for 25 cents. That's at my hardware store at my Lowe's. I know when I go to Home Depot, they, they are discounted, but not at 25 cents. But I do get lucky and find some really good pieces. So this was one that was already this size. I did cut a one by three into 12 inches, which is the width of the board that already had on it. I sanded down the edges to make sure there are no splinters. And then using a wood glue as well as brat nail, I secured them to each side because we are creating a decorative serving tray for the kitchen. I'm going to fill in the holes using some wood filler. You don't need much, just a little bit. Let it dry. It dries pretty quickly, actually. And then once it was dry, I did sand it down using my block sander. This is where you pretty much remove most of the wood filler because you just need that little tiny hole in there filled. Um, but once you have it nicely smoothed, or once I had it nicely smoothed, I then painted everything using this time using regular household latex white paint because we're not going to be distressing it with a sanding block. We're going to be distressing and using some dry brush technique. So I am going to give it two coats. I am using this stencil that I have had now for a while. It said it's so good to be home. I am going to place it in the front kind of bottom right side of the serving tray. I am using a sponge. It's like a makeup sponge and Waverly chalk pen in the ink. And I'm going to just dab it, dab it, dab it. Now, this one was a hot mess, guys. I had way too much paint on the wedge sponge, and it just bled through on me ridiculously. So we'll address that here in a minute. But right now, I am going to dry brush a little bit of uh, chalk paint. This is by rust -Oleum. This is their country gray. And I'm just going to dry brush here and there just to kind of add a little bit of dimension, a little bit of distressed farmhouse look to it. But you're going to see here how I didn't let the paint dry. <laughs> You see how I made it even worse? 
yeah so i'm sanding down to mute down a little bit of that dry brushing and then using a thinner smaller brush i'm going to try to clean it up see how messy that is now worst comes to worst i can always paint the whole thing but i did was able to fix it and it came out pretty nice and then i am going to add these handles that are absolutely stunning they're from hobby lobby they were 3.99 but i got them with 40 percent off so it was a really good steal. I really love their handles and their knobs. I think they're just so beautiful. These have like a farmhouse style look. Look how beautiful this serving tray turned out. Ugh, I think it's one of my favorites today. Actually, it is. I just love, love, love the size of it. And I love how fresh farmhouse it looks. For this next project, I am going to take this uh, 2x6. It was actually a scrap piece that I already had at home. And I'm going to sand it down just a little bit again to clean it up and remove any splinters or roughness from it. And then using the same household latex paint, I gave it two coats and let it fully dry. This is going to be a little apron holder for my kitchen. So I did use my Cricut and cut out the phrase, let's get cooking. And I'm going to place it to the left side of the board um this stencil vinyl i get on amazon i do have a lot of the supplies paints vinyl tools that i use on my diys i do have them on my amazon store so check it out i do have it linked down below so as i mentioned i'm just going to place it here towards the left side of the board and then i'm going to start stenciling it once again with a makeup sponge as well as the waverly ink chalk paint and i'm still putting a whole lot of <laughs> paint it's like I don't learn. I don't learn. But anyways, this one did not have as much bleed through because it is sticky and it was quite, you know, stuck on the um, on the board, but it did still have a little bit of a little bit of bleed through. So live and learn. Make sure you don't use a lot of paint on your brush or on your sponge and it'll be better. I'm going to put put two sawtooth hooks on the back of this one and that way we can hang it on the wall. And then I'm going to use this other hook that I got at Hobby Lobby. This one was $4.99, but it was also 40% uh, off. So it was a pretty good deal. I think it's pretty heavy duty and I love the style. It has that white farmhouse distress look that I love. And that's it for this one, guys. I think this one turned out so stinking cute. I don't use many aprons, but I do have a couple at home, including this one that's hanging there. And I just thought it would be perfect to place in my kitchen and hang an apron or two from it. Love it. I want to get to your clothes, got to get it right now. I want to push all the limits with you right now. This DIY, I am going to take this piece of board. I got two exactly the same size with this black, like, paint already on it I'm not sure what it was but it was in the scrap wood area at the hardware store it looks like they used majority of the board and they cut it but um, whoever purchased the board left this piece in the scrap wood so I got it for 25 cents so I'm going to give everything again two coats of the regular household latex white paint this one's uh, indoor and outdoor paint um, anything that goes in the kitchen a lot of times I like to use regular household paint because you never know. You never know, you know, with the humidity that sometimes is in the kitchen, grease or whatever, you know, I think it's a little bit more durable. You can always use chalk paint and then seal it, but I have, you know, this latex paint, so I thought, why not? So I cut out the phrase, welcome to our kitchen. This is going to be one of those vertical boards signs, and I'm going to place it where I currently have a mask holder, but we're not using as many masks these days here where I live so I decided to switch it up and place this one so I'm just going to place the welcome right on top then I'm going to place or place two hour right underneath and then for the kitchen it's going to be vertical and let me know what you think I felt like after I did it I felt like the letters were way too tiny <laughs> but if I would have made them any thicker or any wider I think it wouldn't have looked quite right but the board wasn't long enough for the word, if that makes sense. So nonetheless, I left it as is. I think in the end, it turned out pretty well. But let me know. Do you think the letters are too too small? Should I like remove them and place them bigger? Let me know in the comments. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically dry fitting them. So I'm placing them very lightly. I'm not sticking them very heavily on them. Just placing them so that way I can 
uh, move them as needed and that way they are as even from each other as possible. I am going to keep the stencil part of the letter. So you see how I removed the letters and then I have like the remaining part of the vinyl. I'm going to keep that because that can be a little stencil for the word kitchen in the future. So now that I have them where I want them, I'm just going to use my little scraper to put them in place. And then I am going to place two sawtooth hooks right on the back of them. Again, just to be able to hang them. The last one, I placed the ones where you just hammer down because it was a smaller, lighter board. This board is a lot heavier, so I am going to use the ones that you screw in. So I did place two of them. And there's what it looks like. I really like it. I love the way it turned out. Again, this is right when you enter my kitchen. So you are able to see it. And it says, welcome to our kitchen, kitchen, which I think is very appropriate. But I love, love, love the way this one turned out. Let me know, though. Let me know in the comments what you think of that. And let me know what you think of um, these DIYs. Which one is your favorite? I'd love to hear that. And if you're visiting for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy this video and I hope it inspires you to create your own home decor. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. I am going to have a playlist here with tons more of inspiration for you. Check it out. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye.